Ivy is introduced on stage as a seductive and poisonous plant lady. She performs on stage at a gentleman's club, although it's clear she doesn't enjoy it. As she walks home from her shift, she feels like she's being followed. She runs into a large stranger and even though she tries to convince him she could give him a good time, he pulls a knife on her. A group of kids holds a couple at knife point to rob them, but Batman arrives to put a stop to it. He easily defends himself against the small fighters. The kids explain that they're orphans, who are actually being forced to help a man commit these crimes. Upon hearing that, Batman makes sure the despicable man won't be able to come after them. He instructs them to go see Sister Leslie at St. Cadwells to get off the streets. Ivy has been stabbed by the ominous stranger she met on the walk home. Batman arrives at the grisly scene. The next day, the mayor of Gotham is hosting a preview of Gotham's World Fair. Harvey Dent makes sure to mention that it wouldn't have happened without the financial support of Bruce Wayne. They enter the grounds and the mayor shows them a giant electrical lantern that works better in the dark, and the fox wheel, which spins at an alarming rate of 15 miles per hour. The mayor and Dr. Hugo Strange assures everyone that they will be safe on it. A woman named Miss Kyle steps out from the group and says she wishes he offered the woman of Gotham that much assurance, but instead they're being slayed in the streets while the police stand by and twiddle their thumbs. A nun steps forward as well to reinforce Miss Kyle's concerns and blame Jack the Ripper. Another woman believes Batman is the one eliminating the women. Bruce Wayne arrives in time to calm down the situation. The men tell him there are just a few disruptive females that are about to be escorted away. Suddenly, Bruce surprises them by greeting Sister Leslie warmly and having her accompany him and James on a carriage ride. Sister Leslie tells Bruce about Ivy's murder, but refers to her as Pamela. Bruce is devastated to hear that the orphanage members aren't safe. Later that night, Batman is watching over Miss Kyle as she walks in the darkened city. She keeps encountering Roblox until Jack the Ripper appears. Miss Kyle ends up running through a slaughterhouse in an attempt to evade the killer, but when she's cornered she pulls out a whip. It seems to be working well as a defensive weapon, but then Jack grabs a hold of it and starts strangling her. That's when Batman jumps down to fight him off. He proves to be a tough opponent. Batman is left in a heap on the floor after Miss Kyle shoves a pig carcass into Jack. Just as he's about to take out his wrath on the woman, Batman pulls a lever to drop the floor out from under him. At first, Miss Kyle is furious with Batman for interfering, because she wanted to put an end to the Night Butcher. He warns her that the man is tougher than he anticipated, but that doesn't change Miss Kyle's mind. He disappears before she finishes her rant. Batman arrives in Commissioner Gordon's backyard after he's had a nightmare that his wife was Jack the Ripper's next victim. Batman says he's on his side, and Gordon hints at the fact that the police force could use a vigilante's help. He tells Batman to visit Dr. Hugo Strange. Batman gives him a detailed description of the man in question, being sure to mention that he's left-handed and has incredible fighting skills. Gordon hands him an unpublished letter from the killer to the press and agrees to leave the police station files on the roof, per Batman's fondness for the location. Gordon asks Batman not to return to his home again because it's his sanctuary, but he's already gone. Bruce Wayne reads the killer's letter and it only infuriates him. It goes into gross detail about dissection and what he will continue doing if he isn't caught. The handwriting looks like that of an educated person pretending to be below average. Alfred insists that Bruce Wayne attend a formal event with Master Harvey Dent, Gotham's solicitor, before venturing into the night as Batman. Harvey Dent confesses he's in love with Selina, the star of the show, and Bruce remarks that his wife will be thrilled. Harvey says it's the future now, and marriage is more like a business arrangement. They enter Selina's dressing room after the show, and Bruce is surprised to see that it's Miss Kyle, Batman's newest acquaintance. The trio spends time talking in a saloon, but it appears that Harvey is sleepy and grumpy, while Bruce and Selina talk about the clues they have about Jack the Ripper. Harvey implies that Selina is a gold digger, which is the only reason she's getting along so well with Bruce. Her feelings are hurt, and Bruce tells her not to mind him. She remarks that Harvey becomes a sort of Jekyll and Hyde when he drinks. They come up to Men Only Club, but instead of parting ways, Bruce smuggles Selina in, wearing a top hat and jacket. Bruce admits that he's already figured out Selina most likely grew up in a family of performers, and she lost them in some traumatic event, which led her to this continent where she made it her mission to act as the champion of the voiceless. As children, they both found security and safety at St. Cadwell's with Sister Leslie, who encouraged them in their greatest time of need. Suddenly Bruce says he was a fool, and runs off to find the kind and precious nun. He only arrives in time to hear Leslie's scream. She is eliminated by Jack the Ripper. Bruce is beside himself. He can't do anything but dedicate himself to avenging Sister Leslie's death. Alfred tries to console him, reminding him that revenge isn't the way of the Lord, and Leslie wouldn't want him to be alone right now. Bruce says it's how he works best, so Alfred gives him space. A very sad funeral is held for her in the rain, and afterward Dr. Hugo Strange approaches Bruce Wayne for professional reasons. Alfred leaves, and Strange tells Bruce that he knows Jack the Ripper is here, although he can't be sure who it is. He suggests that Bruce, with all his connections, must know Batman, 
who should meet him at his office at midnight. One of the orphan boys Batman met earlier is caught trying to steal out of Alfred's pocket. Since they mention losing sister Leslie, Alfred lets the boy go and hands them a business card so that they may do odd jobs for him and eat a warm meal. An old woman stops Bruce on the way to his carriage and claims she has dirt on him. A crowd and police listen as she says he should be arrested for something he's done. Doctor Strange has very angry and miserable patients just outside his office. Expecting Batman, he kindly greets the mysterious figure that appears in the room. It's a man dressed in normal clothes, who put on a mask before drawing a knife in his left hand. Doctor Strange tries to reason with him, but it's no use. Batman arrives and runs toward the sound of the doctor's cries for help. He finds Jack the Ripper, throwing Strange into the pit of his unhappy patients, who rip him apart. Batman chases the masked man up to the roof of the building, just in time to see him push another man to his death, off the low-flying blimp he hijacked. More men arrive and try to stop Batman. When they fail to, they get on the phone to report that he eliminated Doctor Strange, and everyone needs to be on the lookout for him. Batman faces Jack the Ripper in an intense battle inside the blimp, until they land on the rooftops of Gotham, with the blimp flying just overhead. Jack manages to get on top of the blimp, but Batman lands a good kick on him. Their intense fighting skills land them just beside the propellers. Jack is about to have Batman's head chopped to pieces when other people start shooting at them from the ground, and explosions start. Jack runs away, somehow escaping just before Batman falls to the ground, on fire. He barely catches a glimpse of him just before he vanishes, and Batman is forced to run from police that believe he eliminated Doctor Strange. He changes to Bruce Wayne by taking off his mask and wearing a coat, but overhears that police will pick up anyone for questioning. He continues evading them until Selina Kyle appears in her carriage to save him. She discovers that he's Batman, due to the suit, and says anything Bat-related will have to go, since the police will be searching for anything related to him for a while. The carriage is stopped, and the door is opened, but they act as lovers in the act, to be dismissed without further questioning. Selina enjoyed it more than Bruce did. The police and Commissioner Gordon find the body of the old woman that made a scene at the funeral with Bruce Wayne. Selina wakes up with Bruce and says she could have guessed he was a superhero. She felt the calluses on his palms the night they first met, and knew they were the palms of a trapeze artist. She asks more about the Batman story, and remembers that his parents were eliminated. They have an emotional moment together, after Bruce admits that no amount of revenge would be enough to make up for that loss. Suddenly, the police barge in and place Bruce under arrest for the murder of Marlene Mahoney, the old woman. Bruce doesn't know who they mean, and the officer remarks that he's eliminated so many, he's forgotten their names. On the way out, the officer tells Selina not to count too much on Harvey Dent's help in proving Bruce Wayne's innocence. Harvey was the one that suggested they look for Mr. Wayne in Selina's chambers. Bruce tries to appeal to Commissioner Gordon, but he doesn't even want to look at him. In court, they list several ways in which Bruce looks guilty, but the most incriminating thing is Miss Mahoney's death. The judge agrees not to set bail for Mr. Wayne, so that he cannot buy his way out of the consequences. While in prison awaiting trial, Miss Kyle visits Bruce. She says he must tell the commissioner that he's Batman, because then and only then, he has a true and solid alibi for the first murder. They need Batman's help to catch the real Jack the Ripper, and if he doesn't come clean, he's putting the women of Gotham at risk. Since Bruce refuses, she decides to do it herself, because she still has the suit he left in her carriage. After she leaves, Bruce writes out a coded note, and bribes a guard to deliver it to his house for $200. Guards stand by and watch while the prisoners fight, and after Bruce Wayne tries to take on the winner, a huge brawl starts, which draws the guards away long enough for him to steal one of their uniforms. He escapes on horseback. Selina arrives to see Commissioner Gordon, but instead, Harvey Dent appears and accuses her of being a prostitute that never slows down, jumping from one lover to the next. Harvey threatens her, and says that James is at the fairgrounds preparing for the grand opening. Selina takes off to find him, so she can tell him that Bruce Wayne is Batman. The orphan boys drive a horse and loaded cart to the location Alfred gave them. They unload it, deciding they'll be honest and return to Alfred and complete the job. Once they're done, Batman shows up and says they've done well. Selina finds James at the fairgrounds and they walk together. Batman arrives at Commissioner Gordon's house, startling his wife. He enters the basement, despite her objections. Batman finds newspaper clippings lining the walls, stories relating to Jack the Ripper along with experiments and tools for dissection. Gordon's wife says that Gordon's a good person because he burns the sin out of her. Batman notices the burns on her and rushes off to find where Jack the Ripper and Selina are. Selina is attacked by James when he reveals himself to be Jack the Ripper and injects a syringe into her neck. She becomes groggy while trying to fend him off with her whip. She manages to keep out of his grasp while he rants about painted prostitutes that are nothing but disgusting filth on the inside. He believes they should all be gone. Selina is stabbed and bleeding, so she uses her blood on the electric lantern to make the best Batman symbol she can. It shines brightly into the sky, showing Batman where to go. Selina barely manages to tell James that by eliminating her, he would be exonerating Bruce Wayne. 
he doesn't seem to care and claims her blood will christen the fairgrounds. Just as he's about to cut into her, Batman breaks into the box and starts beating James. He admits that Jack uses his left hand for dirty work, but James only uses his right because the nuns beat the devil out of him. During battle, James falls a great height, which gives Batman the chance to speak with Selina and ask if she's okay. But the battle isn't over yet. Jack returns to continue the fight while ranting to Batman about women, even saying that wives are worse for giving themselves so cheaply. Selina barely manages to escape before the fox wheel is entirely ablaze. The metal creaks and the wheel starts swaying. Somehow during the fighting, Batman handcuffed James to a railing. Instead of admitting defeat, he simply starts backing up into the flames. Batman tries to reach out for him, devastated to see his friend in this situation. Jack the Ripper continues moving until he catches fire. Batman manages to get off the wheel before it falls, but he lands hard on the ground. Selina appears to help him get out of the way, just in the nick of time. Alfred and the orphan boys arrive to give them a lift out of the burning fairgrounds. As the buildings and statues crumble, the orphan boy says it was all fake anyway, and they'll build something newer and better in its place. 